If you're in the market for a new gaming monitor or just a monitor in general, it can be extremely tricky trying to figure out what specs actually matter for you. Should you pay more attention to refresh rate or resolution or screen size or panel technology or response time or brightness or contrast ratio or color accuracy? Like there's so many different specs when it comes to a monitor that it's sometimes hard to figure out which monitor out there is actually the best one for you. So to start things off, I just wanna kinda of go through a simple overview of the different types of panel technologies that make up monitors and just kinda of lay out what the benefits are, what the drawbacks are for each one of them. So for the most part, there's four different types of panel technologies. You have TN, VA, IPS, and OLED with TNVA and IPS all being LCD technologies and OLED, of course, being organic light emitting diodes where every pixel is also its own backlight. So when it comes to the four different types of panel technologies, just think of it as TN, really good response time and refresh rate and nothing else. VA, really, really good color accuracy and contrast and, and good brightness. So very good for content consumption and creation, not the best for gaming. And then think of IPS as being the best of both worlds while still having a good price point. And think of OLED as being the best of the bunch, but you're gonna pay for it. So let's say you figured out what panel technology you're gonna go with. You wanted to save a little bit of money. You're gonna both game. You're also gonna create content on your, your, your monitor. So you go with an IPS panel. So now you've decided IPS, but now you have all these other specs to consider. So what should you actually pay attention to? And the first thing we're gonna take a look at is screen size and resolution. So when it comes to screen size and resolution, they typically align very, very well. So let's say you're gonna go with a dual monitor setup, but you don't have that much space. So you're gonna go with two 24 inch panels. So in that situation, 24 inch, you probably only need 1080p resolution. Uh, and of course with 1080p on a 24 inch panel, it's gonna be perfectly fine. Like it's a small enough screen real estate where you don't need the extra pixels to account for it. Uh, but if you do step it up to a 27 inch monitor, you're probably gonna wanna go with 1440p or 2K resolution. And if you go up to 32 inches or above, you're probably best off going with something that's 4K. So the more you step up in screen size, the better off you're gonna be with a higher resolution. So. If you're doing like more content creation and you want you know a single uh, display setup, then going something bigger like a 32 inch panel makes sense, but you're probably gonna wanna go 4K as well. Whereas if you're going for gaming and you want like, you don't wanna have to deal with looking outside of your peripheral, like you just want everything to be right in front of you, then a 24 inch really high refresh rate 1080p panel makes a lot of sense. Like you can push max refresh rate from your PC at its native resolution. So that's another thing. Like if you're playing like really demanding games and you want the max amount of frames, then going with something that's 1080p natively makes a lot of sense versus having to step your PC down or the output of the game itself down to 1080p, but output it on a 1440p or 4K display. It's not gonna look as good as if it's running on a native 1080p panel. So that's kind of the next rule of thumb, like 24 inch, 1080p, 27 inch, 1440p, 32 inch and above, look for something that's 4K. But next up is kind of the, the, the specs that cross all of those borders. It doesn't matter what the panel technology is, it doesn't matter what the size is, and it doesn't matter what the resolution is. And that is refresh rate, response time, contrast, brightness, and color accuracy. So the first one up is refresh rate. And refresh rate is really simple. It's how many times your screen is going to refresh over the course of a second. So if you have a 60 hertz panel, it's going to refresh 60 times a second, 144 hertz panel, it's gonna refresh 144 times a second, so on and so forth. So the higher the refresh rate of your panel, the more times it's going to refresh the screen. Now, of course, the human eye can only see so many uh, refreshes. It can only refresh itself so often. And that's typically like right around like 80, 75 hertz is what the eye can see. But at the same time, the more times your screen refreshes, the more opportunity there is for your eyes to grab the right frame. So 
the more frames you can generate, the better. Really, no matter what the eye can see, like the eye might only be able to pick up, pick up 75 hertz, but it might be out of sync with the 75 hertz of your panel. So if you can output 165 or 240 hertz, then your eye can kind of catch up and, and see the right frames at the right time. Um, but when it comes to refresh rate, uh, the typical rule of thumb is that you want at least, I would say, for content creation, like 75 hertz is a lot better than 60 hertz. Like it's, it seems like a small jump, just that 15 hertz, but it means a lot when it comes to like the, the, the amount of time every frame stays on the screen. Uh, and the same can be said, like if you're, if you're going for gaming, uh, it probably makes a lot more sense to go for something that's at least like 144 hertz, uh, maybe 165 hertz. If you're looking at really high demanding, you want to max out your refresh rate. Uh, then of course there's 240 and 360 hertz panels for those folks. Um, but I would say minimum like 75 hertz, no matter what, it'd be really, really good if you go like 120 hertz. Even if you're just doing content consumption, like the difference between a 120 hertz panel, like the smoothness of dragging around windows is just so much better than a 60 hertz panel, like you'll notice a difference right away. Uh, that's why every phone has gone from 60 hertz to 90 hertz at least, and in some cases 120 hertz, just because even though you're not really gaming on your phone, and even if you are, like it just feels a lot more smooth going from a 60 hertz panel to something that's closer to 90 or 120. Uh, so I would recommend like at least 75 hertz and, uh, and 144 hertz for gaming. And what goes right in line with refresh rate is going to be variable refresh rate technology. So uh, that's the ability for your monitor to match the refresh rate being output by your device. So if your graphics card's only outputting 100 hertz uh, or 100 frames per second, but your monitor's running at 144, there's gonna be an issue between those two syncing up and it's gonna lead to artifacting or screen tearing or issues with the display. So Variable refresh rate allows your monitor to match what your graphics card's outputting. So if your graphics card's outputting uh, 100 frames per second, then your monitor's going to match it. And normally that's seen on the, the marketing side of monitors as either G-Sync compatible or G-Sync ultimate for NVIDIA users or FreeSync or FreeSync premium for AMD users. And typically monitors that are FreeSync enabled will be G-Sync compatible just kind of inherently. And that allows you to enable the variable refresh rate settings on your PC. Uh, so definitely pay attention. You really probably want to get a panel that has variable refresh rate. The majority of them do nowadays. You don't really need it if you're just doing content consumption. Most devices are gonna be able to output 60 FPS uh, and then that'll match like a 60 Hertz monitor or most devices will output 75 FPS and match your 75 Hertz monitor. But variable refresh rate is just a nice to have. But the next one up is pixel response time. And typically pixel response time is marketed as gray to gray response time. So the amount of time it takes from pixel to go from a gray state when it's turned on to its gray state when it's turned off. And typically for IPS panels, that's around one millisecond. For OLEDs, it's like 0.3 milliseconds, like really, really fast pixel response times. But that's not the total response time of every pixel. That's not from turning on to turning off. It's from gray to gray. So Total pixel response time is something that's not really marketed and it's very difficult to find when you're purchasing a monitor. And that's where it actually pays to, to look at some of those review sites like ratings.com that have the technology and the ability to use super slow motion cameras, actually look at the, the pixels and see how long it takes them to turn on and turn off. So you could have the same uh, resolution, the same uh, panel technology. Uh, you could have everything match when it comes to a monitor, but the manufacturer of that monitor will be slightly different, the panel itself, and you won't have the same total pixel response time. One might be eight milliseconds total, and one might be 15 milliseconds. And that's a very, very big difference when it comes to the feel and the latency uh, of your monitor. So definitely pay attention to some outside sources uh, when it comes to total pixel response time. Once you maybe hone in on a couple monitors that are both gonna say one millisecond gray to gray, but get the mean pixel response time from one of those third party sources. And the final specs to pay attention to that maybe are a little bit more nuanced that maybe aren't as critical to everyone are things like contrast ratio, which is uh, the contrast capabilities, how dark your screen can get in the dark areas of a scene versus how bright they can get in other areas. For VA, that's typically like 3000 to one. For IPS, it's like 1000 to one. Then of course with OLED, it's like 
insane because you have pixels uh, completely turned off in the black scenes and then all on 100% brightness when it's required. And it's pixel by pixel dimming. So all of that is like, it, it's not super critical, but does make a difference when you're consuming content. If you're consuming HDR content, that's another thing to pay attention to is the HDR rating of the monitor that you're buying. Like if that's something you care about, like watching HDR videos or editing HDR content, then the contrast ratio along with dimming zones, along with just the HDR rating, will say a lot about the monitor's capabilities. And then you have things like uh, uh, color accuracy and the delta E of a monitor. Typically what's considered really, really good color accuracy when it comes to a monitor is a delta E of less than two. So that's just something to kind of be aware of. But if you're looking for a color, color accurate panel, like it's typically going to come with paperwork in the box that says how color accurate it is. But if you're looking for something for vo photo editing or video editing, you need crazy color accuracy, look for something that's advertised as a delta E of less than two. And then finally you have screen brightness and that's typically denoted as a nits value or how many lumens can be output by the display itself. And normally you wanna stick around something that's like at least 350, 400 nits. The higher you go, the more capable it is in HDR modes, the more capable it is of just getting super, super bright. Not everybody likes a really bright screen, but you can of course dim that screen down. Um, but I would say around three to 400 nits is a good place to be. So with all that set aside, like let's say you find two monitors and everything's equal. You have the same refresh rate, the same resolution, the same size, the same panel technology, uh, the same contrast ratio, the same response. I'm like, everything's the same. Like the last thing you're gonna wanna pay attention to is the actual outputs. So the connectors on the display itself, along with the ergonomic capabilities of the monitor stand. So. First things first is of course the number of outputs. How many outputs does the display have? Does it have one HDMI? Does it have two HDMI and a display port? Like those things actually matter, especially if you have multiple devices. If you wanna hook up a laptop and a desktop and maybe a console as well, then at least three connectors would be a nice to have. And then a lot of monitors will also have built in USB, USB hubs. So you can plug in one USB to your, your PC and then get a couple more USB ports on the monitor itself along with like audio. So of course the outputs are very important depending on your use case. And uh, you also kind of want to pay attention to the future proofability of your, your display in terms of the connector uh, uh, generation. So uh, for like a 24 inch 1080p monitor, like it's not going to make that much difference if it's an HDMI 2.1 connector versus HDMI 1.2 or DisplayPort 1.4 versus 1.2. Like it's not going to be that crazy of a difference because the monitor can't output that much like it doesn't need that much bandwidth to output 24 inch 1080p compared to something that's 32 inch 4k then display for 1.4 hdmi 2.1 makes a lot more sense um so connector uh generation not really super important it's going to be spec to match what the monitor is capable of outputting uh it's more important on the device your uh, itself not necessarily the monitor pay more attention to the output uh, uh quantity and then finally, you have the ergonomic side of things. Of course, you can go out and buy a vase mount or an external monitor arm and just like have full capabilities of ergonomics. But if you are going to include or use the included monitor stand, just pay attention to things like height adjustability, uh, rotation, tilt. Uh, height adjust is probably the most important thing just so you can set that monitor up at the perfect height in terms of ergonomics. Um, so that's kind of the last thing to pay attention to. All else being equal, uh, outputs, and ergonomics so hopefully this video was helpful hopefully it kind of clears some things up as to what to pay attention to what the kind of minimum requirements should be when you're going out and purchasing a monitor uh, if you have any other questions or comments be sure to leave those down below if you enjoyed the video definitely give it a thumbs up if you haven't already get subscribed to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one